In today's video, we're going to talk about three reasons why you might have levator scapula pain and how to fix it. Yo, what's up? It's Eric Wong here from Precision Movement. And today we're going to talk about a little muscle called the levator scapula, which is literally a pain in the neck. Okay, it can go from, it goes from the cervical spine and inserts into the superior angle of the scapula. Okay, and it's a very thin muscle. It's maybe about two or three fingers wide, but it can be very problematic in a lot of people. Some of the symptoms that you might feel if you've got levator scapula pain is kind of like a trigger point knot type feeling when you press in that area. And you might also get some referred pain down through the shoulder on top of the scapula and towards the shoulder. And you might also get headaches. So if you've got chronic headaches or migraines, then, and you feel that tightness in the muscle, the levator scapula might be the problem, okay? So, why does it happen? Well, there's a couple reasons why it happens. Before we get into that, actually, let's talk about some mobility. The levator scapula, if it's tight, it's gonna limit a few different movements, okay? So the first movement is side bending. So if the levator scapula is really, really tight, then you're not gonna be able to get to about 45 degrees, okay? So when you side bend your neck, you should hit about 45 degrees or more. Rotation, when you're Rotate your neck, rotate your head. You should be able to get about 90 degrees. So you can see all the way to the side. Okay. If the levator scap is tight and restricted, it's going to limit those two movements. So there's a really quick mobility test that you can do just to see if you've got the range in the neck that you should have. Okay. If you don't, then levator scap is definitely one muscle to address. Okay. So. One of the reasons why levator scapula is so problematic these days is because of forward head posture. So when we have forward head posture, the levator scapula has to be chronically firing to support your head in this position, okay? It's not a postural muscle. It's designed to perform movements when we need them, but it's not designed to fire all day and support that posture, okay? So forward head, the more forward your head, the more force required from the levator scapula to support that position. So we've got to address that. A couple of quick things you could do for forward head. Number one is the chin tuck stretch. So if you get up tall, stand tall, move your chin as if you're trying to get away from a finger coming towards it, okay? And then you push in the chin with the webbing between your thumb and your index finger, and you pull up and over this direction with your opposite hand. Hold that for 10 to 20 seconds, repeat it m many times throughout the day, but at least two to three times in a single set. And that's gonna help to stretch out the deep cervical or the short cervical extensor muscles that are often chronically pulling the head down and jutting and pulling the cervical spine into extension. So the, the drummer boy here is, is killing me today. Okay, hopefully it's not come, coming through too badly for you. Okay, so that's the chin tuck stretch, okay? The other thing we gotta do is we gotta strengthen the muscles that support you in this neutral aligned neck position. So the technique for this is similar in terms of the position you get into, but you're lying down, so you're lying in supine, and then you're gonna get your chin down again, so bring your chin towards the floor, and then all you're gonna do is lift the head off the floor, just millimeter, just so you're supporting through the muscles. You hold it there for about 10 seconds, and then you can repeat that for anywhere from three to six reps, okay? So when you do this, make sure your tongue is on the roof of your mouth, okay, your mouth is closed. That just ensures that some deep muscles in the cervi deep cervical flexor muscles are able to work, because if your mouth is flapping around, they don't have the anchor point to function. So that's it. Okay, very simple techniques to help out. Aside from that, it's just awareness. As you go about your day, when you're working at the computer, when you're standing, you've got to make sure you're 
trying to maintain that alignment. It's just postural awareness and repetition. You just got to keep noticing it, pop yourself back up, and if anything, it's going to prevent further degeneration. But if you're a little bit younger or your forward head hasn't been there for too long, just these techniques alone are going to help you to alleviate it. Okay, so that's one reason the levator scapula gets messed up, forward head posture. Of course, you can massage and stuff like that. That just feels good. But that, if you don't address the root cause, it's just going to be, you're going to have to continue it over and over again. You're never going to get lasting relief. Okay, the next thing that might cause it is, goes along with forward head, which is excessive thor thoracic kyphosis. Okay, so rounded thoracic spine, same kind of, kind of idea. It's going to cause excess stress on that levator scap. Okay, so there's two things that I want to talk about with this. You've probably seen thoracic extensions over foam roller. Okay, if you haven't, we'll do a quick review. You can get a foam roller or something hard, stick it at your thoracic spine, and then basically extend over like so. Okay, and you do different segments of the th thoracic spine. So this is a joint mobilization. This just makes sure that the spinal joints themselves aren't stuck and you can actually get into thoracic extension, which we don't have a ton of thoracic extension. It's not, the T-spine is not designed for a lot of extension, but we need a little bit, okay? So that technique will mobilize those joints. Then we've got to strengthen up the muscles to be able to hold that position, okay? Because if we don't have the strength there, we mobilize the joints, it's just going to go back to the same position, the same posture that we were in before we did all the mobilization. So to do this, we can do four point position and just think of thoracic extension. So you could do some cat camels just to warm up. And then you get into focusing on the thoracic spine right in between the shoulder blades there and extending the spine at that level or at those levels, okay? So to do that, it's just mind to muscle connection here Keep the elbow straight, scapula retracted, that'll help. And then think of extending through the thoracic spine. Okay. And you can do whole, I do this for long holds, 30 to 60 seconds, just because it takes a long time to get those muscles to activate in a lot of people. Okay, if you can just activate it real quick, then you don't have to hold it as long, but it takes a lot of focus there into those muscles, extending and just getting them firing up because they're often very atrophied and very disconnected in a lot of people because of the posture. Stretching them out just shuts them off. Okay, so thoracic kyphosis, that's another reason. That's the second reason why you might have levator scapula pain. And if you've got forward head, you probably have thoracic kyphosis as well. Okay, the last reason is scapular movement. So you've got dysfunctional scapular movement, especially in upward rotation. So when you're lifting your arms up overhead, shoulder flexion or abduction, the scapula must rotate like that. So that's called upward rotation of the scapula. If that motion doesn't occur or the muscles that are supposed to contribute to that motion aren't functioning properly, then the levator scapula is going to compensate to try to help out, okay? Because of its positioning, it can, it can, it's an elevator, that's hence the name, levator, elevator of the scapula, so it can help out with that upward rotation movement, okay? The muscles that are most responsible for upward rotation are the upper traps, the lower traps, and the muscle that is most likely to be dysfunctional out of those, the serratus anterior. Okay, the serratus anterior is underneath, it lies underneath the shoulder blade, okay, close to my rib cage, and it upward, helps with upward rotation, and it does posterior tilt of the scapula. Okay, so the scapula sits like this, just like the pelvis can posteriorly tilt, the scapula can posteriorly tilt as well. Okay, helps with that, and then it does protraction, so wrapping the, the scapula around the rib cage forwards. Okay, so it helps those muscle, those movements. It is often dysfunctional. There's so many people this muscle is dysfunctional in. And sometimes it works in a very basic movement, but then it's not integrated properly in the pattern of upward rotation. 
Okay, so that is the place that you've really got to look when you've got chronic levator scapular pain if you don't have <clears throat> those postural dysfunctions. And if you've got the postural dysfunctions, you definitely need to work on the serratus anterior as well. Okay, so for that, I recommend you check out for some more information on it, just to, so you really understand scapulohumeral rhythm, which is the movement of the scapula that I just described. Check out the presentation on the page that I'm gonna to link to at the end of this video. It talks about this concept, talks about the serratus anterior and what it should do and how it should function properly when the complex is working. And you can learn more about it in that. It's pretty short, it's only like eight minutes or something like that. Okay, so check out that link at the end of this video. And until next time, I'll see you later. Peace.